All right, so this video is going to be about my time in Australia around the show. Like I already did the video about the four wheel drive and adventure show in Perth. So this video is about my arrival to Australia, driving around, seeing the sights in the area, and then also going on a brief camping trip at the end of the week before I came home. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy. Again, to all the people that I got to meet while I was down under, Thanks for taking the time to be so hospitable and be so welcoming and say hello to me. And for the people that took me out to the bush and took care of me, really appreciate that too. Thanks a lot. So uh, that's my vehicle for the next few days in Australia. I'm gonna see what the American version, or excuse me, the Australian version of an American Lexus feels like. Now I just gotta figure out how to drive on your roads. So let's see if I can do that. <laughs> I keep turning on the wipers instead of turning on You don't know. <laughs> don't have a clue. I don't have a clue what it means. I'm following those people. I like how this engine feels though. It's fun to drive. to go, but it wasn't. <laughs> series over there every third vehicle around here is awesome well maybe not every third but there's tons 
of good four-wheel drive vehicles is on the road around here. In the U.S., you see one on a, you know, if you go on a couple hour trip, you may see two. Here, you'd see a thousand. Anyway, last night your dad tried to be real nice and order me Indian food while I was asleep on the bed. But it didn't come with the jasmine rice, and it didn't have no, any spoons and forks in the bowl. Basmati rice. Oh, the basmati rice. A while to elevate them. And Lord, I didn't go to sleep for about two hours. And... All right, well, we're at the show thing, so. We're at the show thing, Mrs. King Overland says. So, hey, uh, I did an entire video about my experience at the Four Wheel Drive Adventure Show in Perth. If you haven't seen that yet, I'm gonna put a card right up here in the video so that you can uh, you can get to it. Don't don't but don't go right now. Finish watching this video. But if you want to see that other video, I'll put it up here, and I'll also put a link to it in the description. And you can find it. It's my last video before this one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm, like a cassowary. Kookaburra. Hey, mate. No, no, don't fly off. Buddy, don't be scared. So, uh, in Florida, we have these palm trees, they're really in the fern family. They're called sago palms, and I happen to love them. But this, this looks like the Australian cousin of a sago palm, they grow exactly like that, but they have different fronds in these. I mean. No, so separate two different plants by what 10,000 miles across the world and they would grow to be a little bit differently but they look like the same thing but a little different that's kind of cool hey little buddy oh there's another one mm -hmm. oh yeah This is my new pal. Is that one of your friends? No. Hey there. Oh, does your leg itch? So look at the tail of the Joey's hanging out of her pouch. You see it under there? Yes, yeah, cute. We'll get you some food. Hold on. You did it a while ago. I'm not harassing this poor animal. Uh, he did that for me a while ago, and I didn't have the camera on, and I can't get him to do it again. That's all. And it was very, very cool. So. I'm just trying again to get him to do it.
Come on, buddy, do it. Do it. No. <sighs> Guess I just missed it. What'd you say this skin to? Me? Yeah. I said it looks like the cousin of a lemur yeah. all day long. Yeah. Just separated by, you know, an ocean or two. They only, interestingly, they only live on Madagascar. Thank you very much. Oh. 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 So do you realize that's his neck flesh all the way down there under those feathers? Like, it's resonating out of all of that. Come around to the side, you can see it. I don't know. Go around to the side and look behind his feathers. I can see it when he does that. We don't have any big boys, but I wish he did. Yeah, he's got them curled up. Oh, there's another one somewhere in the distance doing it back there. Come on, bud, do it again. Two girls are coming. Look at me. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> These are the Aretha Franklin Segos again. Somebody tell me what these are called. What's up, Mr. Magpie? Hey, bud. What's up? What's up? I'm not trying to bother you. Let's hear you do one of your sounds. Arr. Okay, okay, you're cool. Are you all excited? Do you like to go camping? Do you like to go camping? Huh? Huh? Are you a little bit excited, Fred? Hold on a sec. Are you on? Oh, you are. Okay. I thought you were on time lapse mode for a second. Ah, uh, you know, I appreciate you checking. I've done that before. Mm hmm. Or <clears throat> AKA the Ravenswood Hotel. Um, very popular pub. Fred is going to have to stay in the car. Sorry, Fred. But it's an awfully long way to camping, so we better stop for a quick piece. Yeah, we're thirsty. Yeah. And we get better get you the famous export. Gotta get you an actually half decent pie. Sounds good. <laughs> Fred, I'm back. Oh okay, okay, okay. Calm down, calm down.
took any of this on the ground, you can take it if you want it. Yeah, it's gonna find a good one. And so what are you looking for in Jared? Does it need to have been lying there for a long time or do you want it to still be sort of what we would call green? No, I want no? it to be de dead and dry. Dead and dry. Um, I don't want, um, I don't want any charcoal on it. Gotcha. Um, because it blunts the soil too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I want it to be kind of a, you know, I'd like it sort of roughly. What is it, Fred? What is it? What is it, huh? So, um, the tree's partially blocking this shot. Harry's cutting firewood. I am retrieving cut firewood, putting it onto the front of his cub camper so we can take it to the campsite. Fred's playing with a stick. But uh, I want to point something out to you. So, this is before we arrived at our campsite. We've barely gotten off the road, to be honest with you. And uh, right away, I smashed the fool out of my finger. You can see it right here in this shot. And, uh, I tried to play it off like there was nothing wrong with it, but frankly, um, it swole up and uh, I was starting to worry it was infected when I got back. But interestingly enough, I got a sinus infection, so I had to go get some antibiotics anyway, and my finger, my finger got better. So I do think it got infected and I did bash it up pretty good. So anyway, I'm only sharing this story because uh, you may not realize this, but I have a reputation of being a little bit accident prone and uh, this trip was no different. One of the things that worries Miss King, uh, Mrs. King Overland, when I go on solo camping trips, is the fact that I'm prone to be a little accident prone, or I'm known to be a little accident prone. So interestingly, at the four-wheel drive show in Perth, um, she connected with someone who was selling really high-quality first aid kits, and then I went over and met the folks. They uh, said they would like to send me some so that I could, uh, you know, make some videos about them and review them. And I got a box of them this week. So, uh, I got several, and I've got more than one of the same kind. It's more than I'm going to need. I'm going to keep some, review them, do videos on them, show how great they are. But I'd like to give one away to someone else who may be in need of a first aid kit once in a while. So, if that's you, um, comment in the description the worst injury you've had while camping or, you know, if you haven't got one while camping, the worst injury you've had, period, where you could have used a first aid kit, and then I will select my favorite one and uh, send you one of these first aid kits. In fact, let me show it to you. It's this right here. I'm serious, high quality thing. I like how well it's labeled. Even got CPR instructions on here. Just, I mean, fantastic. Really, really good stuff. So, if you want this thing, comment, Put in the comments your worst camping injury or worst injury that you've had and when it, when you could have used a first aid kit and I will choose my favorite one and ship this to you. Anywhere in the world. N no, no limitations. Okay? Thanks a lot. Uh, Fred ran off because he saw a kangaroo. Oh yeah, that's a good spot. Yeah, oh yeah, nice look at the little creek. Yeah, I like it. Oh, that's very cool. That's a pretty steep exit over there too, isn't it? I saw a. Um... That's a. And people say the Prado is a mall crawler. Get out of here. Get out of here. Shh, don't tell anyone. I won't. Funny thing is, it's actually super similar to a forerunner. It is. It is in so many aspects.
so bad. <laughs> Shortcuts are fun, fun cuts. Yeah. But I'm still like, still not willing to come up it, even in the dry, just after that one time. I'm like, just once you go, it's not, you can't turn around. I'm too long to turn around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got no grip. So I'm like, well, I'm winching, I guess. <laughs> Here's our camping spot for the night. So I'm out taking a, an early morning walk around my campsite and uh, just gorgeous place. So um, I love going to places where I'm unfamiliar with the uh, flora and fauna um, I, because where I live, I, I know the name of every tree. I recognize them all, but here, I don't recognize any of them except for, I have learned that those are called grass trees right up there at the top left, and I, I love them. Um, earlier in this video, or earlier in a previous video, you may have seen that. I think that's like the distant cousin of a plant in America that I love called a sago palm. It looks like the same thing, just has the Aretha Franklin hairdo at the top. So anyway, um, these I'm very interested in. So I thought about poking a stick in that, but I'm afraid it's going to be like a scene out of Indiana Jones and ants as big as my hand are going to come crawling out of that thing like faster than I can move away from it or something. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's termites. I definitely think it's some kind of ants. I did see a couple of termite mounds earlier when we were driving up here that uh, were at the base of a tree, and, and I asked Harry what they were. He said, yeah, those, those termites, just like I, I thought. So that was kind of cool, but... Uh, Let's see what happens. I want to see want to see what it looks like. I want to see what the ants look like. They're different from Florida ants, I'm certain. Also on the way up here, uh, Fred disappeared for a few minutes. He was running beside the Prado as we drove up, and he uh, got on the trail of a roo and took off in the woods. And then later he was back in the, the vehicle with us, and uh, we saw a roo in the middle of the road. And I think I got a brief clip or two of it on this camera, but ah, so excited. 
<laughs> he wanted out to get that thing, but I'm afraid he may never realize that he's not going to catch him. But he gives it a go, which is fun to watch. So having a good time here. Um, going to do some fun stuff with the guys today. So I'm not exactly sure what is in store for me, but Ronnie has got a video idea that requires an American participant. And uh, I'm his man. So we'll see how that goes. very hard okay that's all I'm gonna do I don't want to hurt it I just wanted to see if anything would come out so I'm not certain what the deal is maybe they're way down deep underneath that somebody let me know what the situation is with this if I did something criminal please forgive me but I was very curious about this and the uh, wannabe ecologist and biologist in me couldn't resist itself so so Fred, you're not okay. I think those must be root traps. They must be. More termites all over this tree. Go on, Fred. Let's go up here. This guy going in circles up here. Yeah. He's trying to figure out what we're doing. Yeah. He thought he saw a bear in Australia. One of the things you should always find in Australia is the Australian wild cow. If you're quiet, perhaps you will not scamper away. Behold, the Australian wild cow. Mm. He's a smart beast, quite intelligent. And lethal. Good morning. This is my last day in Australia, and it is simply a gorgeous place. I am standing here in the middle of Crown Land on the edge of some hills. I'm not sure, not even sure what the hills are called. And uh, we camped here for two nights just to, just over that way. It has been a great visit. Got to meet some very interesting and very nice people. Some of people that I've already met online, but I've met them in person. And a lot of people never met before. Got to meet them at the show and also uh, got to meet them in person around Perth and uh, here on the camping trip as well. Um, far too short of a trip. Definitely going to come back and I, th I think I'm going to pick up immigration paperwork on the way out of the airport. Don't tell Mrs. King Overland just yet, but I think that's what I'm going to do. So, um, standing back there on that hill, just overlooking that scene, and 
again, realizing where I was at the moment. I was really overcome with emotion. I still am trying to fight that. It's been a lifelong dream of mine to come here. And I finally realized it. This will be the first trip. I'll be back to see more and enjoy more. It's a beautiful, beautiful country. And for people who live here, don't take it for granted. Don't ever take it for granted. Get a stick, Get a stick, friend.